ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to mention two hadiths about the series that we were doing on السعادة الزوجين Finding happiness in marriage The happiness of the two spouses in the marriage which they are in And we said that we're going to be taking it directly from the Prophet ﷺ's statements and extract benefits from it because we, there is nothing that can cure and solve our problems better than him ﷺ. So the answers are coming directly from the hadiths of the Messenger ﷺ. Last uh, series we mentioned a hadith pertaining to uh, getting married and how the Sharia pushes you and urges you to get married. In today's one, inshallah ta'ala, I want to talk about al hadith al warida, the hadith that have come pertaining to fi husn ikhtiyari zawja, am a zawj. In being good and correct in choosing the right, sp the right spouse. I'm going to first mention the wife, uh, what wife to choose. And then inshallah ta'ala I'm going to mention the type of husband to choose inshallah ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in a hadith which Bukhari and Muslim narrated وَاللَّفْضُ لِلْبُخَارِي And the wording is the wording of Imam al-Bukhari. مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَةُ لِأَرْبَعٍ A woman is married for four reasons. لِمَالِهَا Her wealth. وَلِحَسَبِهَا Her lineage. وَجَمَالِهَا and her beauty, وَلِدِينِهَا and her religion, four. فَاضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاك Run and go towards the woman who has religion. May your hands be dusted. This hadith, it urges us to choose a woman for religion. When a man wants to get married to his sister, he's going to marry her for one of four reasons. This is common. Some men, they marry the woman because she's wealthy, she's got money. Or she's from a family. Her father's either a king or she's from a, a respected lineage, looked up to from a high tribe or something. Or her beauty. She's very beautiful to him. He likes her, he's attracted to her, so he marries her for that. وَلِدِينِهَا Or he marries the woman for her religion. Those are the four. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Hasten and run to the woman who possesses religion. This hadith, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a hadith that tells us to choose a woman because she has religious values. And there's a reason why this is the case. Because everything else has an up and down. A woman who has religion like in, in the longer run, who fears Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, who knows the responsibilities that are on her shoulder, who knows that she has to fulfill her husband's rights, she has to be obedient and listen to him. She, she would not work towards the angering of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So her religion is strong, 
If the husband says to her, Ittaqillaha fi Allah, she humbles herself and she takes it on board. But if she's a woman who has no religious values, her wealth, her lineage, her beauty, it won't benefit you. Because a dunya mata, this world is only a joy of a very short time, anyways. You're only gonna enjoy, enjoy this woman for a dunya, sorry, for a very short time. The best joy in this world is a righteous woman. And inshallah ta'ala we're gonna expand on that in the upcoming uh, series, inshallah. But the woman who's righteous, who possesses religious the religious qualities that are needed, wallahi, you're gonna live a good life. You will live a very good life. The woman who is disobedient to Allah wa ta'ala, she's then no doubt going to be disobedient towards her husband. The woman who is disobedient to Allah, she doesn't listen to what Allah has to say. She doesn't cover herself. She doesn't pray the salah. She doesn't fast in the month of Ramadan. She doesn't pay zakat from her wealth. The woman who does not fulfill the obligatory acts, that which she should do for Allah, if she doesn't fulfill that, then what makes you think, as a husband, she's going to come and fulfill your rights? Who are you for her to, for her to fulfill your rights? She's already forsaked the greater responsibility, which is the rights of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you choose a woman, my beloved brothers and sisters, let the first thing you look for be religion, her deen. The religion that she possesses. The deen that she understands. It, some people think that the religion is the clothing she wears alone. That is the religion, no doubt. But that's not only it. You look at the woman, what she is within her heart as a person. The deen here is internal and external. Her ikhlas, her following of the sunnah of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, her madahir, her appearance, her outer appearance, her batin, her internally, how she is as an individual. All of this you can find out from the people who are around her. The Sunnah also urged us to marry women for other characteristics as well, <coughs> such as marrying a woman who has or who loves the idea of having children or wanting to have children. The Hadith Imam Ahmad narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, the Prophet, what did he say? تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُودَ الْوَلُودِ فَإِنِّي مُكَاثِرٌ بِكُمُ الْأُمَمُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, marry, تَزَوَّجُ الْوَدُودَ الْوَلُودِ Pay attention. The woman, she has two characteristics that you have to marry for. She is wadud. Wadud means she's very loving to her husband. She really loves her husband. A woman who just wants to love her husband. Marry that woman. She's always, all, she, what she's also doing is, she's making her husband love her all the time. She's doing things to make him love her. That's what she works towards. The Prophet said, al waluda the woman who wants to have children. She loves having kids. She loves having kids and children. She doesn't say, oh, I just want to have one kid. Or, oh, no, I want to only have two kids. No, maybe I want to have kids four years on the line, or two years on the line, or three years on the line. Don't marry a woman like that. Because the issue of children, our Prophet loved it. What did he say? For verily, I am going to say to the Anbiya and the Prophets, the Day of Judgment, look at how large and how great and, uh, and uh, they are, my Ummah, the Day of Judgment. So the Prophet is going to do this, alayhi salatu wasalam. So why would you deprive the Prophet ﷺ from wanting that? Why would you stop him from it? Shouldn't you aid him in what he wants alayhi salatu wasalam? So marrying a woman what? A woman who wants to have children. Like the hadith Abu Huraira says, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ يَأْمُرُ بِالْبَاءَةِ وَيَنْهَى عَنِ التَّبَتُّلِ The woman who he, she wants to have children, she's conceiving. The Prophet ﷺ didn't like her, the man who doesn't want to have children, or the woman that doesn't want to have children. So this is not what the Sharia uh, wants. Well, I mentioned before in one of my uh, uh, lessons that 
Al Imam Shatibi rahimahullah in his Kitab al Muwafaqat, when he talked about the objectives of marriage, he mentions that the ultimate goal of getting married, the ultimate goal, there are other objectives in it, there are other, but the ultimate one is, it is to have children. It is to what? It is to have children. Also, the Sharia mentions other characteristics that a woman should be chosen for. The woman should be chosen for these characteristics. The Prophet said, the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn Majah, at Tirmidhi, and Nasa'i, they narrated it. That he said, Zawajtu imra'atan. Uh, sorry, Tazawajtu imra'atan. Tazawajtu imra'atan. I married a woman. Fa'ataytu al Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I came to the Prophet. Faqala, he said, Atazawajta ya Jabiru. Jabir, did you get married? Faqultu na'am. I said, yes. Then the Prophet said to him, Bikran am thayyiba. Did you marry a virgin or did you marry a non virgin? A widow. Which one did you marry? A woman who is a virgin or not? Faqultu, I said, la, bel thayyiba. No, I married a woman who is not a virgin. A non virgin. Faqala, then the Prophet said, Halla jariyatan. Why didn't you marry a virgin? A young girl. Tula'ibuha wa tula'ibuka. In which you can play with her and she can play with you. Why didn't you marry a young girl who you can play with and she could have played with you? Then the Jabir was young. He married an older lady, a woman who was older than him. He married her. She wasn't a widow. Sorry, she wasn't a virgin. She was a, a, a non-virgin. But the Prophet said, the first thing he said to him, why didn't you marry that? Some of the scholars, they took from this that a virgin is better than a non-virgin. Some of the ulama, they took from that. Others have argued, no, that's not the case. Because the Prophet ﷺ, all of his wives, huh, they were not virgins. Except who? Except Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Except who? Aisha. The rest, they were not virgins. So the khilaf amongst the fuqaha is well known. You will find it. Um, there's a statement that really touched me. Which Sa'id ibn Mansur, rahimahullah, he narrated in his Sunan, but he narrated it mawqufan, wa la yasihu marfu'an, meaning it's the statement of Asma' bint Abi Bakr. This is the statement of who? Asma' bint Abi Bakr. She said that, Ya bunayya wa baniyya, O oh my son, and O oh my daughter. So she's talking to, Ya bunayya. وبني, my, my, and, uh, my son وابنتي and my daughter <coughs> in another way she said يا بني وبني وبني she said يا بني وبني وبني إن هذا النكاح رق this marriage is slavery فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ عِنْدَ مَنْ يُرِقُّرْ كَرِيمَتَهُ One of you should look at where he's going to enslave his, his karima. Now pay attention, this is very powerful. His daughter or... The person has to understand this, which is very important. Marriage is slavery. When a woman gets married to a man, she's slaved. She can't go for another man. She's a slave for you. She's yours. So look at and make sure where you t make yourself as a slave. That doesn't mean you can't leave. You can leave. But it means hypothetically. A relationship imprisons you. It strips from you other privileges and other things that you had. You can't go and think about uh, marriage, marrying another person. Whilst you're in this relationship. So, so it strips you from things. It imprisons you from something. You and the one who's not married are not the same. The one who wants to, can take a straight away getting married. You have to leave this relationship in order to get the married to the dinners. So, religion is what you need to look for. Oh sisters, look at who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Choose it wisely. Is this the right person for me? Is this a person I should be with? Brothers, 
Look at the person who you want to be a husband for. Look at the woman who you want to be a husband for. The woman who you want to be the mother of your children. You have to look at this way before, before you, 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 you go into it. One of the funny things is, that I used to always remember adults saying to youngsters when they want to get married is, when you're young, your brain is not in your head. Your brain is in your waist. So, you've heard that one before. Eh? Nah, your brain is in your waist, meaning desire is only what's taking you. But later, your brain starts to go into your head and you start realizing who is, who is the woman you got yourself married to. And the same is to the woman. She realizes later what relationship she, what relationship she got herself into. And then regret, the pain and the agony starts. So, it's important to be correct in what you choose and who you choose. So remember this hadith. تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَةُ لِأَرْبَعٍ لِمَالِهَا وَلِحَسَابِهَا وَلِجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا فَادْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَلِبَتْ يَدَاكَ Inshallah ta'ala, the second hadith for this particular point, and this hadith is a bit lengthy, so that would mean we've done four hadiths. The second hadith for the chapter today, which is Al Hadith al Warida Fiqhtiari Fi Husn al Ikhtiar. The hadiths pertaining to choosing the right spouse. So now I'm going to speak about couple of points are going to be in this fourth hadith but it's right it is the wife what husband she needs to choose and also other fiqh is going to be in this hadith which is the issue of a father presenting his daughter to a man or also another fiqh that's going to be in this hadith which is a woman presenting herself to a man and the ruling pertaining to that this hadith is a bit long, we're going to go on it inshallah ta'ala and try to extract the benefits that are in it. This hadith is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Anna Umar, anna Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This hadith is Umar radiallahu anhu. Hina ta'ayyamat. Hafsatu binti Umarin. Min khunais ibn hudafat al-sahmi. Hafsa, who is the daughter of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, her husband died. Hafsa, her husband died. His name was what? Khunais ibn Hudafat al-Sahmi. And he was from the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he died in Medina, Fatufi bil Medina. So Umar went, he said, Atay to Uthman. I went and I came to Uthman. And then he said to Uthman, فَعَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ Hafsa. I presented my daughter Hafsa to Uthman. Uthman said, سَأَنْظُرُ فِي أَمْرِي I will look into my affairs. I will go home, see, and then I'll let you know. فَلَبِثْتُ لَيَالِيَ Umar said, I waited for a couple of days. ثُمَّ لَقِيَنِي Then he came back to me, Uthman. فَقَالَ He said to him, بَدَى لِي أَلَّا أَتَزَوَّجَ يَوْمِي هَذَا Uthman said, it has become apparent to me, it has become clear to me that I do not want to marry today. I'm not interested in getting married now. Then Umar then said, فَلَقِيتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ السِّدِّيقِ فَلَقِيتُ أَبَا بَكْرٍ السِّدِّيقِ I went and I met Abu Bakr. I went and met him. فَقُلْتُ I said to him, إِنْ شِئْتَ زَوَّجْتُكَ حَفْصَ بِنْتُ Umar. If you want, I will marry you off to my daughter Hafsa. فَصَامَتَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ أَبُو بَكْرٍ وَقْوَائِدٍ فَلَمْ يَرْجِعْ إِلَيَّ شَيْئًا He did not bring, he didn't come back to me and say anything to me. Meaning Abu Bakr, he never got back to Umar again. He just went quiet and he left. So Umar said, وَكُنْتُ أَوْجَدَ عَلَيْهِ مِنِّي عَلَى عُثْمَانِ He saw that what Abu Bakr did, in comparison to what Uthman did, it left something in the heart of Abu Bakr, Umar towards Abu Bakr. 
فلبثت لياليا after that night went by ثم خطبها رسول الله the prophet got married to her فأنكحتها إياه I married حفصة to my third prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فلقيني أبو بكر إن أبو بكر مأمى came up to me he said to him لعلك وجدت علي حين عرضت علي حفصة فلم أرجع إليك شيئا he said maybe you had you felt something towards me when you presented your daughter Hafsa to me and I never got back to you. قال نعم. He said yes. So he said قلت نعم. I said yes to him. Abu Bakr then said فإنه لم يمنعني nothing prevented me أن أرجع عليك for me to get back to you فيما عرضت علي in that which you presented to me which is your daughter Hafsa إلا أني كنت علمت أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد ذكرها except I knew the Prophet was mentioning her meaning the Prophet wanted to marry her. فَلَمْ أَكُلْ لِأُفْشِيَ سِرَّ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ And I am not one who is going to go out and mention the Prophet's secret. وَلَوْ تَرَكَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ If the messenger was to leave her now, فَقَبِلْتُهَا I would have accepted her from you. If the Prophet didn't go for it, I would have gone for it. Bukhari narrated that. This, my brothers and sisters, it shows us many things. Oh, parents. O oh, fathers, who have daughters who are chaste, who have daughters who are righteous. If you see a righteous person, a practicing brother, and your daughter has reached age of puberty, and you're in a society like this, as a father, follow the example of Umar. Wallahi, his daughter is better than your daughter. Hafsa, wallahi, is better than your daughter. Hafsa is better than your daughter. مع ذلك and even then Umar went and he saw Abu Bakr's virtue and Uthman and wanted his daughter for them. This shows us that when you see a righteous person and you have a daughter, keep in your mind that you are not the one that's going to marry your daughter. You're not going to get married to her. Somebody else will. So choose the right person for her. There's a point I have to draw. I, I want to drive home, and I want you to all understand, which is the issue of the father has to be smart, the father has to be clever, and realize that when your daughter shows sign of interest in marriage, he sees that she's looking around, he sees that she's doing things. The father should take it on himself to bring the idea to her, her, or to start to discuss it with her, so she goes to the right direction. The story which is mentioned in Surah Al-Qasas, Ayat 26, where Allah says, قَالَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا يَا أَبَتِ استأجر. That one of the daughters, she said to the fa her father, this righteous man, who some people say is Shu'ib, but it's not Shu'ib, يَا أَبَتِ my father, to this her father is a righteous man, she said, يَا أَبَتِ my father, استأجره. employ, Employ Nabi Allah Musa. Because she came home early, early than the normal time. Her father realized how did they guys how did they come home quickly today? Because normally they come late because they're waiting for every single person to fulfill their needs from the well, and then after that do they go. So they come home late. So he realized how did you guys come home early? So they told them what happened. That a righteous man, Nabi Allah Musa came and helped them. So one of the girls. One of the girls, she said, Ya Abbot is Oh, father, employ him. Why? Why should she employ him? She said, In the Khaira Minister Jartel Kawi, in the Khaira Minister Jartel Kawi, you'll mean the best person to employ, the best person to hire is a person who is strong and is reliable. Are you with me? I believe personally that Nabiullah Musa married this woman, the one who said, Oh father, employ him, oh father, hire him. I believe he married her, even though from the siyak of the eye is not. Pay attention, look at this look at this point. When she said to her father, Oh father, hire him. Oh father, hire him. I personally believe. That she was the one her father married her off to Nabi Musa. When he said to her, when he said to Nabi Musa, 
قال إني أريد أن أنكحك إحدى بنتي هاتين I want to marry off one of my daughters to you I'm sure that he had in mind the one who said hire him the reason why I believe it's that one is because the father here realized she was ready to get married ah she had something already in her heart towards Nabi Allah Musa. A father is a smart one who realizes when his daughter shows those signs, he works with her. That is then when they were righteous people at that time. Imagine today in a society and the kind of lifestyle that we're living. A daughter brings you a righteous person, practicing person, and you reject them because you're not the same tribe as them. Or you reject them because they don't have a lot of money as to what you th expected or what you thought. We're not that in that society, my beloved brothers and sisters. But then this ayah also has another benefit, which is, what does a woman take a man for? She takes him because he's qawi, he's strong, ameen, reliable person. She can trust him. She's strong and he's a reliable, trustworthy person. Those are the two characteristics that a woman chooses a man for. That she takes him on board. Those two characteristics are not only specific to the woman, huh? For her to choose this from her husband. But it's also a characteristic that a man marries a woman for. You need a woman who's strong. Who can look after her children. She's strong. She can look after her children. You don't want a woman who's weak. A woman who's reliable. Who knows your secrets. She knows your internal affairs. And she keeps it private. You can trust her with your properties. You can trust her with your household. You can trust her with your children. You can trust her with your bed, that she won't bring no other man into the house. You can also trust her with your secrets and your private life. She's a mean, trustworthy individual. Those are the two characteristics that if a marriage is lacking, my beloved brothers and sisters, that marriage will never stand. And that marriage will not lift a head. It's a marriage to the road of destruction. It's rather for you to spend time in that marriage is basically watering in the desert. Your actions are here. Kasarabin biqi'a. It is like a mirage. You're working towards something that doesn't exist. Because these are the two greatest, strongest pillars that the communication and the relationship of two humans, two humans who want to work together. She's talking about the issue of hiring. Hiring. She wants these two qualities in him. So that's how it should be, my beloved brothers and sisters. Al-Qawi, strong person, and Amin. Even Nabiullah Sulaiman, when he asked the jinn, the jinn, when he said to him, go get the throne of Balqisa, go get it for me. <coughs> what did he say? قَالَ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَن تَقُومَ مِن مَقَامِكَ وَإِنِّي عَلَيْهِ لَقَوِيٌّ أَمِينٌ I will bring it to you before you leave your seat. Sulaiman used to have a Bajr Suqala, a place where he used to come and he used to judge. In the morning he used to come and in the evening he would leave. He said, I'll, I'll bring you her, her throne before you leave your sit, before you leave your shift. And then she said, he said after that, why? How can I do that? And how could Nebulah Sulaiman trust him on this? And he said, I am strong and I am a person who is reliable. It's two characteristics here. So running uh, a project requires somebody who's qawiyun amin. A marriage, anyone who's running it needs to be qawiyun amin. The wife who's running the household, she has to be qawiyun amin. The two people who are dealing with one another, both parties, quwa and amana. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, this also shows us the permissibility of a woman. And this is also permissible. Belia Jews, rather, it is highly recommended, some scholars said, that in some circumstances, but definitely it is permissible that a woman presents herself to a righteous man. She goes to a righteous man and she say, asks him for marriage. And Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, Imam al-Bukhari, he chaptered a bab in his sahih. He chaptered a bab, he chaptered, uh, he placed a chapter in his sahih. And as we all know, Tabweeb al-Bukhari, Imam al-Bukhari, his tabweebat, his chapterings, 
there are fiqh in it. The way that Imam al-Bukhari chaptered his Sahih, this is a jurisprudent ruling that we can take from it. And this is what he called it. He said, Babu ard al mar'ati nafsaha ala al rajul salih. The chapter of a woman presenting herself to a righteous man. She sees a man who's righteous. She approaches him and she says to him, Please, can you marry me? <coughs> These two that I just mentioned, the issue of a father saying to another man, Do you want to marry my daughter? And a woman going to a man and asking the man to get married to her, in our community, Somalian community, it is looked down at. And automatically they think that woman is, she lacks shyness and haya. But what is sad is that if she goes to haram, they see it less. I know situations which a man came to his parents and he said, Mom and Dad, I want to get married. They said, with what? What do you have? What money do you have? So he said, Mom and Dad, I'm scared. I'm worried for myself. I'm worried for falling into zina and haram. They said, well, everybody does it. Everybody goes and commits these haram. When you grow older, you repent, but you're not going to get married now. I know brothers whose parents said, if you have a girlfriend, bring her to the house, but you're not going to get married. Now this is sad, wallah. You won't let him get married, or you won't let her get married, but you let them be in a haram relationship. You will let them be in a haram, haram relationship. A father has to know, and a mother has to realize, that we're in a society where people are having boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. When my child comes up to me in this country, in this society, and says to me, Ma, Dad, I want to get married. When he has other alternatives, which are haram, I'm, I'm, I kiss him on the forehead. I should be wise and smart enough to kiss him on the forehead and say, Oh my son, oh my daughter, may Allah honor you the way you've honored me. And may Allah honor you in wanting to take the path that the Prophet has legislated, alayhi salatu wasalam. Are you with me? It's an honor. It was wrong for my child to even reach a point where they have to tell me that they want to get married. I should have realized, just like that father realized when the daughter was walking. Huh? And she came home and she said, Ya abati sta'jirhu inna khayra mani sta'jarta al-qawiyya al amin Hire him. He realized from there that she's ready to get married. You see my brothers and sisters. This is very important. Um, there's a hadith that Imam al-Bukhari brought after that he brought the chaptering. وَسَاقَ الْحَدِيثُ عَنْ ثَابِتِ الْبُنَانِ He brought it from ثابت الْبُنَانِ He said, كُنْتُ عِنْدَ أَنَسِ بْنُ مَالِكٍ وَعِنْدَ أَبْنَةُ اللَّهُ He said, I came to, I was with Anas ibn Malikin and he had his daughter with him. His daughter was sitting there. He said, Anas was talking and he said, جَاءَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ A woman came to the Prophet. So Anas is sitting here, Thabit al-Bunani is sitting here, and the daughter of Anas ibn Malikin is sitting. So they're talking. Uh, so Anas ibn Malikin says, جَاءَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ A woman came إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ to the Prophet. تَعَرِضُ عَلَيْهَا نَفْسَهَا she presented herself to the Prophet and she said, Ya Rasulullah, marry me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قالت, Ya Rasulullah, alaka bi hajatun. The woman said to the Prophet, do you want me? Do you, you have any need? Do you, want to, do you want to marry me? When she said that, <coughs> are you with me? Anas ibn Malik, when he had said that, that the woman said this. Because Anas ibn Malik is talking about the story of the woman who came to the Prophet and she said, Ya Rasulullah, do you have any need in me? Do you want me? Anas ibn Malik, he said, when the woman said that, Anas's daughter who is sitting there, she said, Ma aqal This woman, look how, where, look how bad her shyness is. Where's her shyness? How little, is she, how she, little is her shyness? Wa so And how evil is she? She said. So Anas ibn Malik, he said to her, هي خير منك. Wallahi, she's better than you. رغبت في النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فعرض فعرضت عليها نفسها. She had desires in the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Wallahi, that woman is better than you. She had desires in the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
in him. So she presented herself to him. So my beloved brothers and sisters, this hadith, it shows us جواز عرض المرأة الزواج على الرجل الصالح that is permissible for a woman if she finds and feels that this man is righteous and he's good that she can present herself to him. Um, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, I'm going to conclude there بإذن الله الكريم uh, anything which I have said which was wrong فإنه مني ومن الشيطان والله ورسوله بريئان من سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليك